Good morning, friends, and welcome to our Sabbath School discussion. I am glad to be uh, one of uh, the invited speakers to, to discuss this uh, beautiful topic. Uh, in this lesson, we are discussing this whole quarter about Psalms. And personally, um, Psalm is a really, you know, as Adventists, as Christians, we've been familiar with Psalms, especially with verses. But in this study, in this lesson, we will see how to read the Psalm and how to apply it in our, in our day-to-day lives. And this lesson, uh, this lesson is really beautiful because uh, it teaches us how to pray using the Psalms. So the title for this lesson is Teach Us to Pray. So before we, before we start, uh, let me read first again the, um, our key text found, if you, have, if you have your Bibles, found in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. It says, the Bible says, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this time in which we would open up our Bibles, learn from you, and learn how to know you through the Psalms. So Lord, as the disciples have requested as well, Lord, teach us how to pray. And teach us through, through the Psalms how we can express our longings, our despairs, even our praises to our God and Maker and Savior, Jesus Christ. This we ask, Lord, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so let's start our discussion uh, this morning. I personally find this topic really personal. Why? Unlike the, uh, I really appreciate our Sabbath school lesson for the past few quarters, but this one, I can really say that this one is really personal, at least for me. Why? Because it deals with prayer. And prayer is not only a church event, but it's also a personal event. And as we study, uh, the, our verses starts with a story of the disciples coming to Jesus and saying, Lord, teach us how to pray. And the Lord, of course, taught his disciples to pray. How, how incredible is that? That Jesus teach, teaches us how to pray. But also, before he taught his, his disciples how to pray, he also teaches us, long before he even taught his disciples how to pray, through the book of Psalms. And that is what we would be focusing on this morning. But before that, let me ask you a question. Have you ever experienced going through something, for example, heartbreaking? Of course, some of us are young people here, or even not so young people here, have experienced that, have gone through that. And the, odd, and the only way, or one of the ways that you cope with your emotion is listening to a sad song. Not really to, you know, to uh, wallow and be poor on yourself. No, but just to, you know, just to express that the song has expressed this certain emotion. And that after listening to that song, maybe repeatedly, after that, oh, you, you feel okay now. You know what? The psalm also does the same thing. Why? Because the psalm is not only a song. It is only, it is also a prayer. So how would we see that? Um, we would see here that each psalm, according to our lesson, is a prayer to God that should be used according to the deeds of the moment. Wow. So just like the songs that we are listening to whenever we're happy, we're heartbroken, we're sad, or when, even when we are angry, the psalm offers us a glimpse, not only to offer a picture of the human emotion, but how our, you know, our trials or what we are going through is, has a connection with, the, uh, with God. How God interferes or maybe how God himself hears our prayers by reading Psalms. So if, Psalms, if the book of Psalms or each Psalm recorded in this book is a prayer, um, how can we use it? How do we use it? In our lesson, um, the, thankfully the lesson gave us 
practical advice. Again, this is practical. So if you have your Bibles or if you have your notebooks, you can list it down. So it would not stay not only it stay in your mind not only this Sabbath but also this coming week. The first one: How would we apply to have a prayer dynamic living relationship as the psalm as the song of our lives? Especially when we are going through something, the first one is to read the psalm and pray. Read the psalm and pray. Why? When you read the psalm, you are not also reading, you're not also, also not only receiving informations or, or how someone who has gone through the same thing has felt when he has gone in the same, same thing. And the writer, even David or the writers has gone through that trial. But also, you should express it or it's best to express that certain emotion to God. Why? You know, friends, I experience that. Whenever I am sad or heartbroken or even discouraged, I turn to Psalms, especially the Psalms that are bleak or darker. And after that, Lord, this is my situation. Lord, this is what I am going through. And you know what? After doing that, the first thing that I feel is I am not alone. That someone like me has gone through something like this and this is what he has felt or he or she has felt. And second, feeling is a feeling of assurance. You're less lonely and of course, second emotion is that you feel that God understands and God hears your prayers. How beautiful is that? Just only to read the Psalms and that God is going, uh, is, uh, he understands your situation and hears your situation and there is an assurance that he will do something in your situation. Second tip is to observe the way the psalmist addresses God. There are many psalms. For example, Psalm 88. Psalm 88 is one of the infamous psalms. Why? Because unlike the other psalms that it starts with, uh, you know, it starts with maybe bleak or sad and ends with joy, praising, praise to the Lord, thank the Lord. Psalm 88 does not end like that. But the way he addressed God, even though the whole psalm is bleak, dark, sad, depressing, he still calls God the God of his salvation. Why? It implies that even though you're going through something, even though you don't have a happy ending like the psalm, you can assure that your God, even though sometimes it seems that you can't see His hand, sometimes you can't hear His voice, He is still the God of your salvation. So it's good to emphasize or to focus how did a psalmist describe God in this specific psalm. Third, Discover the reasons for his prayer. Discover the reasons for his prayer. Why? Actually, there, interestingly, if you have your Bibles, I think all Bibles have these headings. For example, Psalm 43. It says, the heading is prayer to God in the time of trouble. So you, so you adapt the, oh, this is for the people who are going through something troubling or burdensome. So this Psalm is for me. Psalm chapter 8. This is the psalm where David is fleeing from, from his son Absalom. So if you have like dealings with an enemy or he is perse someone is persecuting you, Psalm 88 may be a comfort to you. It's good to know the background of your psalm, of the psalm that you are reading. Fourth is to compare your situation with the psalmist's experience. So just like what I have said, to know that you are not alone. To know that someone has gone through the same thing and they come out victorious, they come out with God as their friend and as their companion through it all. The next one is to think about how the psalm can give you, to, can help you express your feelings to God. This one is my favorite. Why? Because, you know, I remember a quote that says, churches, the problem of our church members is either they are um, what we call um, theologically full, theologically, theologically sound, but their emotions, they, they are what we call spiritual, uh, emotional atheists. Why? 
Because it's they, yes. They say, God is good, God is great, I believe this, I believe that. It's very biblical, yes, that's good. But when it comes through the heart, through emotions, it's detached from God. Have you experienced the same thing? I've been the same person, you know. My head is full, but my heart is empty. You know what, friends? The Bible is not against emotions. Let me tell you that. The Bible is not against emotion. Yes, it is against emotionalism, but not against emotion. How, how would they say that? Because the psalm itself, the book of Psalms, is full of emo emotions. And to know that that person has expressed that emotion to God, however he is angry, even though he is happy, sad, depressed, nothing. Almost, you can even say that, huh, why is that even in the Bible? He is as if angry with God himself. Yes, that's true. When you read the, when you read the Psalms, some Psalms sound like that. For example, the Bible, uh, our Sabbath school provided an example in Psalm chapter 44. Let me read you some of the verses. I'll begin reading Psalm 44 verse 1. It says, the Bible says, We have heard with our ears, o, o God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days, in the days of old. You drove out the nation with your hand, but them you planted. You afflicted the people and cast them out, for they did, gain, they did not gain possession of the land their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance because you have favored them. Basically, the, the psalmist here is saying, this is what you've promised and this is what our forefathers have experienced. And this is what he says. This is what, what, he's rejoicing for that. Verse 4, You are king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Though Through you we push down our enemies. Through your name, we will trample those who rise up against us. Nor shall my sword save me, for but you have saved us from our enemies and have put to shame those who hated us. In God, we boast all day long and praise your name forever. It's rejoicing. It's almost triumphant. And it's good. But not only that triumphant, rejoicing, happy emotion was expressed here. When we go to verse 9, it says, the, Bible, the psalmist says, But you have cast us off and put us to shame, and you do not go out with our enemies. You make us turn back from our enemy, and those who hate us have taken spoil for our, themselves. You have given us up like sheep intended for food, and have scattered us among the nations. See the desperation? See the anger? See the disappointment? You sell your people for the next to nothing and are not enriched by selling them. You make us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn, a, deri a derision to all around us. You make us a byword among the nation, a shaking of the head among the peoples. My dishonor is continually before me and the shame of my face has covered me because of the voice of him who reproaches and reviles because of the enemy and the avenger. You see the emotion there? The emotion is, the, the psalmist is desperate. He's desperate for help. He's basically saying, Lord, if you have done this, I know you are powerful. We don't need to fight our battles because you will fight it for us. But now, it's different. Where are you? Our enemies are almost triumphant in destroying us. Where are you, Lord? See the desperation. It's good to know the emotions expressed to God. When you even see here, the psalmist is almost blaming God for thus injustice or the suffering that they are going through. Though we know as Adventists, we would say, oh, it's not God who caused you that. It's your poor decision and that may be true. But there's a reason why there is something like this. This emotion to the Bible. And there's a reason why God Himself offers no explanation. Now, oh, okay, let's change that. That may be offensive. I would not put it on my Bible. 
There's a reason why. Why did God allow something like this in the Bible? Because He knows how a desperate person talks. He knows how a helpless heart longs for, deliver, for delivery from God. For His mighty arm to interfere in our helpless situation. Isn't that, a, isn't that true? When you're going through something, it's almost, you almost blame God for the things that you're going through. And God sees that. The psalm is a testament to that, that God hears, God sees, and God knows your situation. So let's continue. Another example given in our Sabbath school is Psalm chapter 22. This one is a famous psalm. Why? For one reason and one reason only, this is the psalm that Jesus quoted when he was at the cross. Even Jesus knows how to use the psalm. How did he use the psalm? He used the psalm to express the agony, the pain, the abandonment he has gone through while hanging upon the cross. Psalm chapter 22, verse 1. The psalmist says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night se season, I'm not silent. You hear the desperation in that cry. Imagine Psalm 22, Psalm 44, Psalm 88. All of these psalms that are you know, angry psalms to the Lord is not in the Bible. How would you... You know, how would you picture the God of the Bible? It's hard to relate with Him, all right? But the fact that all of this, something like this, Psalm 22, Psalm 44, all of those that we have mentioned and those you are yet to read is in the Bible, testifies of a God that is close to the human experience, that is nearby, not far away, not indifferent, but a God who suffers with His people, with a God who relates with the suffering of His servants, of His children. Again, think about how the psalmist can help you express your feelings to God. Don't be afraid to express your feelings to God. Be afraid if you are hiding your feelings from God. <laughs> What is better, to express your rawest, your most honest expression and feelings to God or to hide it and pretend, Lord, I'm okay. I know you. I, I know I can trust you. But my feelings, ah, I, I can express it. I can deal with it. You know what? The Lord invite us through the Psalms, through a transformative, even a personal experience with Him. Just like, you know, just like the human relationship, you, of course, you won't express a deep, a concerning, and rawest emotion that you're feeling to a stranger, right? You won't do that. If someone, I, I, if I stumbled upon a student in AUP, of course, I won't vent out to him the frustration of how my grade looks, <laughs> of how hard the exam was, or how hard the situation is in our family. Of course, I won't share it to someone I don't know. But if someone, if that will be my wife, my, or your husbands, or your girlfriends, your boyfriends, or anyone that is close to you, of course, you would express the even the unfiltered emotions, right? Why? Because there's no shame in doing that. Because there is love. You know that even though you express that certain <laughs> emotion, he understands. That person understands. And that's the same thing to God. You cannot express these certain emotions without having that intimate relationship with him. Amen? So friends, if you want to grow your relationship with him, start by expressing your deepest, darkest, sorrows and emotion in your life. What is it you're going through? 
What is it that you are hiding or withholding from God that you are too ashamed to open up with Him? Don't act as if God don't know, doesn't know. <laughs> he knows. He's just waiting for you to, for you to give it, to lay it at, at His feet. Next one. If there is something in the Psalms that challenges you, reflect on it. If there are the things in the psalm that challenges you, reflect on it. Of course, there are many things in the psalms that are challenging, not only in our theology, but also in our practice. The psalmist says that the, uh, I would rather spend every morning or every day in your courts than the tents of, my, of the ungodly, right? So, that challenges us. Huh? If I am enjoying my time in the tents or the houses, the parties, the gatherings of the ungodly, why is the psalmist enjoying even an hour, even a day, in, even in the court? You know what the court is in the temple? It's just the outside. It's not even the insides of the temple of God. Even as a cleaner, even as a janitor, that's really an overflowing experience for him. And that challenges us, huh? What is it that the psalmist experienced that I am not experiencing? And the fact is, the God, the God of the Psalms is inviting us with the same experience. Why is the, God of the, why is the psalmist expressing his emotions to God as if he's just a normal person, as if he's a friend well-known? When I can't even do that, maybe the psalmist is close to God. Oh, that challenges me to have that connection with Him. Amen? So that challenges us as well. Next one is to re relate the psalm to Jesus and His work of salvation. I think it, it was N.T. Wright, one of my favorite uh, biblical scholars out there, that says in his book um, about the psalms, it says that all of the psalms with its groanings, with its utter you know, suffering, cry for deliverance, all of these things testifies and met its reality on Jesus himself. When you go through the Psalms, of course, it's the experience of the sons of Korah. It's the experience of um, David, of Moses, of Solomon, and many other writers of course, that's their experience. And that is also your experience. But you know what? Think that each Psalms that you are reading is, an, is a window that you are peeking at to see the story of Jesus, the emotions of Jesus. If there's a window to know how did Jesus feel when he was pursued by his enemies, when he was about to get stoned by the Pharisees, when his disciples are not getting him, when he was betrayed by his closest friend, how does Jesus react? Maybe the answer is in the Psalms. Because Jesus himself answered that on the cross. <laughs> Psalm 22, he was expressing that same pain. And many other things. If you want to know Jesus, of course, read the Gospels. But also, the Psalms offers a glimpse of what Jesus has gone through, of what Jesus has felt. The abandonment, or maybe the loneliness even, even the rejoicing and the praises, he experienced it. So the Psalm is also, not only that points to Jesus in that way, but also points to Jesus as the deliverer of the Psalms. Most of the Psalms, when you read, we read, of, read about it, is, uh, starts with, of course, I want, just what I've said, just like, for example, uh, Psalm 73. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 73, it starts with bleak and sad, even complaining way, but when he went into the sanctuary, oh, it becomes, the, the latter part of the Psalm becomes rejoicing, full of rejoicing, full of confidence in God. Why? Because there's a deliverance that happened. Because there's salvation that happened. Psalm 51, the prayer of David for confession, that points to Jesus. That offers forgiveness and grace 
and gives us the joy of salvation when we come to Him in prayer and repentance. Next, ask God, finally, ask God to put His Word in your heart and in your mind. So this one is the final um, final uh, advice that we have given to us through our lesson that it is good to reflect upon the Psalms, but on, not only to reflect upon it, but to keep it in our hearts. Let me open our to a verse that many of us are familiar with. Uh, it's found in Psalm uh, 119, verse 9 to 10. Um, it says in the Bible, okay, it says here, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. These words from the Bible and even the words of the Psalms, the reality of the human experience and how God intervenes and even unites with us with that experience, I invite you to make the Psalm a reality. Make the Psalms as a prayer of your life. And, and as I have said, whenever you are sad, go, th read, go read a Psalms that is full of sadness. You'll see that you are not alone. If you're happy and you want to rejoice God with everything, with all your heart, with all your life, go through a Psalm, read a Psalm, pray it with God to see the joy of the experience of knowing God and knowing His miracles and seeing the mirac miracles seen in your lives. And lastly, uh, before we end, let me tell you again that the psalm is not only a book of songs that can be sung, but psalm is a book about prayers. You know, before I end, um, someone asked me, because my thesis, uh, this Hopefully, this semester, I'm about to defend it. But someone approached me and says, you know what? After reading Psalm 88, uh, that's my thesis, by the way. So reading, after reading Psalm 88, why does God include that Psalm in the Bible? He can easily re reject it or not include it. No one will notice. Or he may simply add, you know, additional things that says, that offers a good Quote unquote, a good ending to the Psalm 88 because it's full of anger, full of bitterness, full of sorrow and despair. No happy ending in the Psalm. But you know what? The thing is, that Psalm is not only a song, it is a prayer. And that's the reason, that's the same reason why you remember the friends of Job. The story of Job, Job is almost angry at God. He is almost blaming him, questioning him of his wisdom, of God's wisdom. Why is he letting, why, why is this happening to me? And the friends, you know, what they've said was valid. They, they said, that, oh, uh, this one is good. You've done, maybe you've done this and you've done that and you deserve that. When you do something, that's the consequence of your action. Deserve, that's, that's what you deserve, Right? But you know what? After the end of the book, God says, you friends of Job, Job has done nothing wrong. He is vindicated, God says. And the friends of Job, you guys, you must offer, you must offer a sacrifice because what you've just said to Job are all foolishness and you've done the wrong thing. Why? Because yes, they're defending God, they're giving Bible studies, they're listening with God. But Job's attitude, even though he's angry, even though he's going through that painful experience, he never left God. But as he says, say those words of anguish, anger, and pain, they are all prayers. And that, my friends, should be our prayer as well. Again, so this, the book of Psalm is not only a book of songs, but it is also 
a book of prayer. So Lord, may our, may our prayer today, today be, Lord, teach us how to pray. But more specifically, teach us how to pray through the Psalms. May God bless us as, uh, as we continue through our, through our study this morning and my, may God bless us all.